This is SSP TV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. We talk baseball with Joe Madden and take a look back on the career of a man who worked in the media, the business world, and the nonprofit world here in the area next. Hi everyone, I'm Ken Cara. I hope you're having a great day and I thank you for watching. On Monday, our Lisa Sugar and Sam Lasand Jr. were at the office of the United Way of Greater Hazleton as they welcomed new president and CEO Gary Perna and said goodbye to Pat Ward, who retired from that position after 16 years. I'm going to miss everybody. It's bittersweet, but did some talking with my family, did a little self-assessment, and I thought it's time. Age-wise, I'm still in pretty good health, so hopefully... Uh, Kathy and I, we have two adult children. They're both married to wonderful gals, and we have one beautiful little granddaughter, Nora, who's four and a half, and we want to spend more time with family and maybe do some traveling while we still can, and uh, time to move on. Well, you will definitely be missed. Uh, we wish Gary Perna, of course, the very best of luck, who is said he's going to attempt to fill your shoes, um, so I'm sure Gary will do a fantastic job. but. As you look back over the years, you started as a volunteer here. You were volunteering. You were involved in the media, of course. I followed you. I think <laughs> radio stations, Dance TV around, stations, St. Yeah. Joe's Hospital. We both worked at many of the same locations, but not together. So um, take us back. Like, what was, What's it been like over the years throughout your career? Well, with United Way, first of all, I, yeah, it's probably about 30 years. I was in charge of public relations and marketing at the time for St. Joe's Hospital, another wonderful organization. And I was asked to serve on what we call the Allocations Committee, where people from the community decide where the money that's raised goes. And a while after that, uh, the CEO of the hospital, my good friend Sister Edwin Aldous, stepped away, and I was asked to come on to the United Way board. And at the time, I was probably the only non-CEO of an organization that was on the United Way board. So I learned a lot, met a lot of great people, and along the line, I had uh, uh, gone up through the chairs, if you will, on the board. And 16 years ago, I was actually the board chair when my buddy Mary Malone decided to step away to pursue other opportunities. And I was asked to come in then for six months as an interim CEO, and 16 years later, I'm so happy to pass the torch to Gary. Uh, we, we looked and considered a number of people, and we wanted somebody that had ties to the community, and Gary seemed to be all a perfect fit uh, to step into the position. So I'll work with Gary for the next couple of weeks and try to bring him up to speed and then cut him loose. <laughs> because there's one thing I said, I don't want to be in Gary's way ever. He's now the president of the United Way. I am not. Aww. Well, when you look back over the years, how has it changed? Because things have changed a lot. This entire community has changed a lot. Well, obviously, the demographics of the community have changed dramatically in that period of time, a little bit longer than 16 years, Lisa. But I would also say the way business is done has changed dramatically in that, and there are a few notable exceptions, a lot of businesses in, the, in this community are owned elsewhere by corporate America somewhere. Not that there's anything wrong with that because we've had a nice economic boom in the industrial parks thanks to all of Can Do's hard work in the community, but it's more difficult now for us to make contact in some respects. Plus a lot of our big givers have passed away and or moved out of the area. So there's a lot of challenges. We tried to retool this thing to do business differently and I'm sure Gary's gonna pick up from there. Today's news feature is brought to you by Falvello Law Firm. Have you been injured in a car accident? Call Falvello Law Firm. Your case is our fight. At the Try Not To Suck In The Valley Golf Tournament, former Major League Manager Joe Madden addressed a number of topics. Of course, he talked about the group he founded, the Hazleton Integration Project, which is where the money from the golf tournament will go. We'll have a full feature story on HIP and Madden next week in sports. 2022 marks 50 years since Title IX gave women's sports a big push in the United States. This year in Major League Baseball, Rachel Balkovic became the first female manager ever for an MLB minor league affiliated team, and back in 20. 
2020, Kim Ng became the first female general manager in Major League Baseball. I asked Madden about this. I met Kim with the uh, Marlins. She's wonderful. I've been in different meetings with her, so I know her on a personal level. Uh, the young lady managing in the Yankees organization, I haven't met her, but I've heard good stuff, like from other, uh, you know, guys in the, in the Yankee organization and people that I know uh, speak very highly of her, very highly of her. And again, you're always curious. You're always curious because nobody wants to get a position just based on gender. They want to have, have to earn it. So I love the idea that uh, it seems as though the, the women representing are, have done a really good job and have earned the right to be there, which I think is really important regardless. Um, so I think as we continue to grow it um, and more, more ladies uh, want to get involved, um, it's, it, it definitely it just broadens the scope of interest within the group. Again, it's no different than the diversity that we're demonstrating uh, in this particular city. It's, it's a diverse thought process. It's, uh, it's an open-minded process. And again, it's just uh, the ladies that want to get involved, if they want to get involved in a major league professional level, uh, it, takes, it takes a lot of work and it takes a, a lot of sacrifice, a lot of devotion, um, which everybody's capable of doing. So we'll see how it continues to grow, but it's absolutely interesting. And like I said, the people that are involved, the ladies that are involved, I've heard nothing but good things. Time now for weather on SSPTV News. Here's our forecast from the National Weather Service on Friday. A slight chance of showers and thunderstorms after 2 p.m. It will be sunny with a high near 87 degrees. Winds could gust as high as 20 miles per hour. We have a 20% chance of precipitation. Friday night mostly clear with a low around 66 degrees. Saturday sunny with a high near 88 degrees. Saturday night partly cloudy with a low around 70 degrees. Sunday a chance of showers and thunderstorms after 2 p.m. Partly sunny with a high near 90 degrees. We have a 30% chance of precipitation. Sunday night a chance of showers and thunderstorms. Mostly cloudy with a low around 69 degrees. Degrees. We have a 40% chance of precipitation on Monday, a 50% chance of showers with thunderstorms also possible after 2 p.m. It will be partly sunny with a high near 81 degrees. Monday night, a chance of thunderstorms before 8 p.m., partly cloudy with a low around 61 degrees. We have a 30% chance of precipitation. We have a quick sports score for you before the break. The Valley West 10 to 12 year old Little League All-Stars lost 4-2-3 to Southern Lehigh in the Section 6 tournament on Wednesday. They opened up tournament play with a win. Now they'll face Council Rock Holland on Thursday night. SSP TV News, we'll be right back. SSP TV News, flight send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Laura L. Bruschetta, age 84, of Hazel Township Services will be private under the Joseph A. Moran Funeral Home. Martina Gomez, age 84, of West Hazelton, friends may call on Saturday from 3 to 9 p.m. at the Frank J. Bonham Funeral Home. Season B, Carney, age 77, of Eagle Rock, the Frank J. Bonham Funeral Home will announce their arrangements. Grace Kenley, age 92, of Ringtown, a service will be held on Saturday at 11 a.m. at Memorial United Methodist Church in Ringtown. Friends may call on Saturday from 10 to 11 a.m. at the church. The staff for Brunswick Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. Margaret Lloyd, age 91, of Berwick. Services will be private under the Mayo Funeral Home. Aurea Magliona Ruiz Roman, age 79, of Hazleton. Friends may call on Friday from 3 to 6 p.m. at the French A. Bonham Funeral Home. Deborah A. Wadonner, age 64, of West Hazleton. A funeral service will be held on Saturday at 10 a.m. at the French A. Bonham Funeral Home. Friends may call on Saturday from 9 to 10 a.m. at the funeral home. Rosemary Wilkes, age 83, of Hazleton. Services will be private under the Jose Moran Funeral Home. Aunt Cecilia M. Zahay of Freeland and McHugh Wilczek Funeral Home will announce their arrangements. The obituary report is brought to you by Moran Funeral Home, third generation family owned funeral home serving all faiths since 1939. Located at 229 West 12th Street in Hazleton, call 570 454 8341 and go to moranfuneralhome.com. 